Hey everybody, my name is Dave Daniels. I'm a woodworker and I own Absolution Woodworks, which is a, a boutique wood shop here in Visalia, California. Uh, I specialize in building custom furniture, fine art cutting boards, and what I like to call highly specific objects for highly specific people. I'm here today to give you a little presentation on how to sell your stuff at the Tasty Arts Festival. It's usually the first big kickoff for the holiday season for me, and it's always been a really successful market. I'll start off by showing you a little bit of my work. Uh, here are a couple of furniture pieces. So the large piece is a cedar dining table that I made for a, a family here in, in Visalia. Um, the smaller piece is a coffee table featuring old growth redwood in the style of George Nakashima. I try to use local and salvaged wood as much as possible uh, in my work. Here are a couple more coffee table pieces, a cedar round, and we have a lot of really interesting and, and cool types of wood around to work with. And then an English walnut round, English walnut being one of my favorites. And here's a sample of some of my ingrained cutting boards, what I call fine art cutting boards. They're functional art, so it's, it could be an art piece on its own, but it could also be used. Now, one of the things that I think has been important for my success, and I think will be important for your success in really any field that you choose, and that is a commitment to quality. So I, a couple of years ago, People would say, hey, that looks good, keep, keep it up, and then they would walk away. They wouldn't actually commit to buying it. I made to myself a commitment. I said, hey, I'm going to make sure the quality of the stuff that I'm making is good and that it's at a level that, that I can say, yes, I did everything I could in that piece to make it as good as it could be. And at that point, people started going, hey, that's great. I'll take it home with me and buying it. So really think about that. If, if you find that Every time you set up, people are walking by. Think about the things that you can do to improve your art and, and take it as a, a learning process. Um, so when anybody's making a product, you want that product to be hopefully something unique. Uh, maybe I'm able to create something that nobody else can, and therefore I'm the only person who can sell that thing. Or if you can't make something that's entirely unique, maybe you can make it better. So maybe you can take your art and you can do a better job of it than the person next to you, you know? Uh, it's, it's your way of standing out. Or, so maybe you can do the same quality, same kind of thing, but maybe you can do it for a price that's a little bit cheaper. Um, or, you can do all three of those things. So maybe you can make something that's unique, it's high quality, and you can do it at a, at a place that's, that's reasonable. Uh, again, you gotta have that commitment to quality. So if, if the thing you're making is not good, uh, if it's not cool, then people aren't going to want to buy it. Uh, but if it's high quality and it's a, if, if it's of a good value, somebody will probably want to buy that. Now, let's, let's think about the actual setup, the day of. So when you get to Taste the Arts, um, what, what should you be doing? These are things that I've figured out um, that, that have been successful for me. The first thing is you want to display your items well. So if you have awesome art, but people can't see it, then they're probably not going to come over. Okay, so here's one of my pieces as an example. This is a, a ingrain cutting board featuring hickory and black walnut. Now, when I first started out, uh, I used to just pull out my cutting boards and, and plunk them flat on the table. Now, when somebody's walking by, they're not going to be able to see what, what I've got here. They're going to have to come out of their way, walk over to the table, stand over it, and then look around. Now, if I take this cutting board and I turn it up and I display it, prominently in a place in my booth where somebody could see it, then they're gonna be able to be casually walking by down the road. They're gonna see something and they'll say, hey, that looks interesting. Let me, let me go ahead and, and, and cruise over there and, and check it out. I also sometimes will, will display my work. If I'm just doing a table setup, I'll use these plate holders to display my work. I also have some racks that I bring out um, and, and those, those give me a little more levels so you're going to want to think about that for your art. Your stuff is going to be different than mine because you're probably doing different things. Uh, think about the way you can set up your space. Maybe you want to create a miniature art gallery. Maybe you want it to be more like a studio where you're actually, you know, standing, standing there painting and your work is around. Offer a variety of price points for your art. Uh, this will give people the opportunity to purchase something uh, without spending a fortune or potentially the first purchase in a series of purchases they'll make as they get to know you. Dave Quiggle is a, is a tattoo artist out of Southern California. Here's 
uh, a poster he did for Queens of the Stone Age on the left, uh, and then a Donald Duck inspired piece uh, for a, a Disney event he did. And in the middle, here's a piece of his art, uh, a tattoo art, a guy with a massive back piece tattooed. That tattoo is rad, it's huge. First of all, couldn't afford it, but also didn't have the guts to do it. Um, but uh, hey, I look at the, the Daffy Duck Square, probably priced around, I don't know, 20, 40 bucks for a print. Hey, that's something I can do. Uh, in my case, I offer things uh, at my booth from anywhere from like 30 or $40. $30 is typically like the, the cheapest item I have. All the way on, on up, if I have a piece of furniture, it could be, you know, a few thousand dollars, depending on what I bring. In the middle of October, people are starting to think about Christmas, and I found that from the $50 to $100 range, that is the, the money spot for Christmas gifts. Um, people are willing to, to shell that out for a, a quality Christmas gift. Okay, so give yourself and your customers a variety of price points so that they can, they can choose how much they want to spend. Functional items sell. Um, this is something that can be tough for artists, especially if you're a painter. Um, you know, you want to think about, is there a way to make my art usable so that a person can justify purchasing it for, for more than just an aesthetic purpose? One thing I like to use as an example of this, this is a, a piece of art that I carry with me virtually every day. Now, this is something that's cool, that is at an accessible price point, and it's useful. It helps me keep track of my keys. Now, while I'm checking out that guy's booth, I'm thinking, hey, I could use that. That's cool. I can also, might be tempted to buy a, an art piece. So here's a, another piece from the same artist. This is the diet fork. All right, so he's, he's taking a fork, and, and this is not a functional piece, really, although I suppose it could be if you really were serious about your diet. So there you go. Functional items sell. So... Use your creative mind to think of ways that you can make your art functional without making it cheap. Next point, sell an experience. This could cover a wide variety of things for you. This is your opportunity to, to create an experience. The example I'll use for that, I had a very surreal experience in Santa Fe, New Mexico at the Georgia O'Keeffe Museum. And one of the pieces that struck me was a piece called City Night. Um, the canvas is probably seven feet by four feet. It's this massive, intense uh, painting of a city landscape. When you walk into, the, into the, the room, the first thing you see is this massive, massive painting, and it's just towering over you. You feel dominated by, by these like, bleak landscapes. When I got to the gift shop, I found this, this print. It totally does not capture the real feeling of the piece, but it does remind me of that experience, and that's why I bought this. So when I walked into that museum, I felt something real and interesting, and I wanted to remember that, and purchasing this print was a way for me to do that. So you can do that as well in your own art space. So perhaps you are very charismatic, or you're interesting, or you're doing something in your space that's really unique and cool, and somebody will want to take a piece of that home with them so that they can remember that experience. That's up to you to kind of figure out what that's like. Going along with making an experience for the people who are, who are uh, attending your event, you can also think about ways to make your booth interactive. Now, that can be as simple as you interacting with the people who come into your booth. And I think that's actually a really important thing to keep in mind. Um, most people are intimidated by artists. People don't know how you think or why you do the things that you do, and they probably don't understand the art you're making. So this is your opportunity to invite them in. You want to interact with them. Uh, one of the things I have are these magnetic bottle openers. These are displayed like right, right by where they would walk past so that they can come and they see it, and then they can, oh, fiddle with it. Oh, hey, these bottle caps will just stick to the bottle opener. That's pretty cool. And then they get kind of drawn into the rest of the stuff that's there. And then I'll go in and tell them a little bit about how I made it, um, the things that are involved with that. And then there you go. You've got an interactive experience. You can be maybe doing your art in, in your space if that's, if that's possible. Or maybe you can invite them and have them do their art too or, or create their own art. Um, think of all these ways to make your work interactive. Next point. Um, be thinking about beyond the day of the festival. 
Um, so this is a great opportunity for you to get out in front of a bunch of people who have never seen you before um, and who don't know you. It's your way to introduce yourself to a broad audience. A lot of people come to this festival. So I always have business cards, which is a really simple way to like, hey, boom, take my card. Social media, just saying, hey, I've got an Instagram account, Facebook account, check me out there. A lot of people will, will actually follow up with that. A uh, sign-up sheet for a newsletter if you do one of those. Well, even if they don't buy something the day of, they'll come back later on. Um, and I've heard of, of experiences where somebody saw an artist piece, you know, taste the arts, and then four years later they finally ended up buying something from them. So, so they are thinking about you. Um, so so th don't worry if you don't make the initial sale. of customer service, customer service, customer service. Um, this is your opportunity to totally destroy everything you've done before. If you've displayed your items beautifully, you have the world's greatest painting in the world. You have a wonderful interactive experience, but if you're a jerk, the people are gonna leave. They're not gonna be interested in you or your art or spending money with you. My impression is that people are looking for an honest interaction with, with you. They don't want some, some phony version of you, but but you know, give them a, a good customer service experience. Here are a few practical things that I found uh, that will help you immensely. Uh, first off, display your best work prominently. That's gonna be the anchor that somebody walking around the street will see, they'll grab it and want to come in. So if you have a really big massive piece, so I might, in, in years past I brought out a dining table and displayed that very prominently and it's very striking, and people will want to come up and see that, and then they might come and see some of the smaller items. To clearly price your items so that people can see how much something costs without having to ask you. Take a little sticker, write a number on there that you want to get for it, and put it on somewhere on the piece so that they know this is how much this is. Now, let me give you an example. A couple of years ago, I was in Santa Barbara. We found ourselves in Dune Coffee Shop in Santa Barbara. You should go there if you haven't, it's red. Delicious coffee. Now, on the wall was this amazing work of art. All right, we have the pizza brain skull. It's got everything about art and me that I love. And I looked on the wall. I'm thinking, dude, I've seen all this expensive art. There's no way I could afford this. It's probably like $700. Had there not been a sticker on there, I probably would have been like, ah, I can't afford it. And I would have left. I guarantee you. That's what would have happened. But since there was a sticker on it, hey, this is something I can afford. I love it. I'm going to take it home. So put price tags on your art so that people know how much it is. If they don't know how much it is, they probably won't ask you how much it is uh, because they're going to think it's $40,000 because that's the way art is. So, so make it easy for them. All right. Another really simple thing that you can do is to take credit cards. Um, or Venmo now. I've been using Venmo a lot lately and people have, have really liked that and it's a really easy way to exchange money. There are a variety of options. You can check those out. I use PayPal here and it comes with a card reader and it goes straight to my PayPal account. There's Square. Um, there's a whole bunch of, of options but bottom line is most people aren't carrying cash especially a couple hundred dollars worth of cash unless they're a very specific type of person. Um, so, so make it as easy for them as possible to spend their money with you. Now, huge thing, do not pack up early. Okay, don't pack up early. This is something that over the years has, has been really critical both to you and then for the people around you. Now, I've had shows where I haven't sold, like I've spent three days, haven't sold anything. And I'm just sitting there, dude, like totally bummed out. Man, what a waste of my weekend. I spent a bunch of money to come here. I could have been making stuff. And then come the last hour, end up selling 10 large cutting boards. Boom. My day made, my week made, my month has just been made. And that's because I stuck it out. I stayed in there and I committed to the, to the time of the event. You never know who's going to be walking by and you want to be ready for it. Now, beyond that, that's a simple courtesy thing. So if, if somebody across the street is starting to pack up, chances are that, that kind of thing is like contagious. People are going to think, oh, the event's over. And then the people walking around are going to think, oh, the event's over. And then they're going to take off. 
So it's a real bummer when people start packing up early and you could be missing out on an incredible opportunity. Just commit to it. Even if your day didn't go well, stick it out, both for you, for your potential in, in, in the next 20 minutes or so, and also for the people who are also trying to sell their work. Don't pack up early. After the event, um, use it as a learning experience. What went well? What didn't go well? What did you enjoy? What didn't you enjoy? Be thinking about these ways that you can improve. Um, what things sold, what things didn't sell. Or you could have generated a lead. Um, a couple years ago, I did a home show up in Fresno. Total bomb. But hey, a guy from the solar booth across the way saw my stuff. We chatted a little bit. He's like, cool, I'll take your card. Call me back a week later, and he commissioned a multi-thousand dollar piece for his kitchen. Sweet. Totally worth going to that event now. So just because it's over, it doesn't necessarily mean it's over. Finally, the last point, I'm gonna drive this home one more time. You are going to want to commit yourself to quality. Again, commit to quality. I can't stress that point enough. If you are committed to quality in your craft, in your art, in the environment and experience that you're creating for the people who attend your event or, or come and see you in your studio, I promise you that will lead you to success in the future. Whatever it is that you choose to do, commit yourself to quality and it won't lead you astray. Thank you guys so much. My name again is Dave. Uh, I, I run Absolution Woodworks. You can find my work on social media, uh, Facebook and Instagram, Absolution Woodworks at Absolution Co. Shoot me an email. Um, if you have any questions, I'm happy to help you out. Uh, and I'll see you at Taste the Arts.